sort of said about David Howell. I remember asking him when I was a junior. I think he just won Dubai Desert Classic. And I think he said. <laughs> So I put out a QA and a a couple of weeks ago on Instagram and Steve in this video is answering your questions. Now Steve's top 400 in the world, proper tour pro, plays Sunshine Tour in South Africa. Now he's given away quite a lot of really good nuggets of information in this one. So if you are a golfer that's looking to get better, um, check out this full video. Lots of questions, lots of really interesting answers. Um, if you do like the video, make sure you give it a like, subscribe and enjoy. Okay, right, let's just get things get things started and then uh, we'll get into the questions when we get a bit further away from the road, I think. Starting on the fourth here at Cumberwell on the red course. 416 yards up, uphill. Probably playing about 460 today, right? Yeah, and, and some, I think. It's cold over here in England. It's, uh, temperature's dropping, wind chill is up, winter glove is on. Same result from Steve, though. Right, so what we'll do is we'll start with like general stuff and then if it can fit in, so like we've got a shot around the green, yeah, yeah. I'll ask those ones as well. I'm going to take this off because it's a glove, isn't it as well? Yeah, that should be worn doing the gardening. SJX MMXLL asks, what handicap did you turn pro off? I think it was plus two. Okay. Um, which I think when I was about 20, 22 when I turned pro. And that was when um, plus two was like good plus two. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah. I mean, now to like put it into context, is... sort of, I think I was plus two when I was 17 years old. And at that stage, I was like the second lowest junior in the country. Really? Whereas now, you're probably, if I was plus two, I probably would be in the lowest 20 or 15. Struggling at the England squad, wouldn't you? Yeah. Plus two. Yeah. Charlie Carpenter, would changing your loft and driver from 8 to 9.5 to 10, for example, help you reduce the slice? Could do, but you're probably better off having a lesson. I mean, you're going to increase your spin yeah. and you might improve your starting lines, but you are better off having a lesson changing. Yeah. I mean, if I was going to change anything on the setting, I'd put it more on an upright setting and keep the same loft if you launch it high enough. What number have you got? 198. Christ. That's uh, going to have to be a nutty three iron. Found the left front, yeah. sort of thing. I liked it in June when you're in a wedge in here. Got about 170 in it. Yeah, 170 into the wind. Flags just, just sort of over here. Come out a bit flyery, didn't it? Is that a good line? Yeah. Right, that uh, pretty much straight, mate. I think it's just an inside the hole. Inside Pop. the hole, Robbie. Schlott. Bells115. Best player you've played with? You don't have to say me. So. Uh, yeah, you inside. And I've not played with Harry, so. No, I mean, probably career wise, probably David Howell. I've played with David quite a bit, and okay. I think he was. Seventh in the world at one point in a few Ryder Cups. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's done. He's probably quite underrated. In I seen the other day they put up. I think it was the top Englishman to ever get in the top ten, and he was like one of the ten that has been in the top ten in the world rankings. Whereas I think if you ask most people, they probably wouldn't say that about him. No, not at all. It's one of those guys who sort of like flies under the yeah. radar a bit, doesn't he? Oh, that's a good one. Jamie Cano won. How does how do you deal with competition nerves, first tee shot, etc.? Um, firstly, I think it's quite normal to sort of get nervous, and I think after a while, I prefer to be nervous on the first tee than not nervous because it means that means so. I'm sort of excited and engaged and looking forward to playing. Yep. Uh, in terms of dealing with it, I just try and remember that I'm just playing golf, like irrespective of what's. What it means to you, it's still only a game of golf, and probably in 
a year's time that round of golf will actually mean nothing to you yeah. even though at the current time it means everything or if you're going well in the tournament and you get nervous the last few holes and just try and Put try and yeah, yeah in, in the grand scheme of things in a year's time it's going to make no difference if you double bogey this hole or eagle this hole it's you good to go there yes just sort of filming Harry there so I'm gonna call him all day I think flower same build <laughs> one for one is that playing yardages yeah on your uh yeah yeah should be off the right I think yeah pretty much straight off the right should just be a fairly comfortable pitching match Shot that. So what's your number here? 107. Okay, this is, I've got a perfect question for you in a minute. Okay. But before we do that, Mick Hale, 11, what are your swing thoughts? Yeah, currently I'm working on my takeaway. Um, I tend to sort of fan the club right in that way and get my arm disconnected. Yep. So I'm trying to feel my arms go in, the club head stays out, and that sort of tidies up quite a lot of things in my backswing. So an extension of that then, what do you, how, when you're playing a competition, do you take that to the golf course or do um, you try and play without any thoughts and just play golf? Yeah, like we, we were talking about it earlier, I sort of try and balance. So when I practice, I'll do some of it 100% on whatever move it might be I'm trying to do. And then I'll sort of practice trying to do a skills thing and how much I can carry that thought over into performing well on shots yeah so I might play nine holes like we, I've done it with you in practice where yeah I'll really focus on a move and I'll be pretty bad at golf um, and then I'll sort of the, the back nine I'll filter that move out and focus more on playing and try and find a balance yeah. of how much of that move I can try and concentrate on whilst playing golf um, and other things that I will really concentrate on the golf course where I feel like I know if I do this move I will hit a good golf shot okay so it sort of changes it's quite fluid yeah it then. depends what depends what I'm working on um, yeah. but yeah I would experiment with with how much of that thought I can play golf with yeah and just because it doesn't work on the golf course I'll still maintain it on the driving range when I'm be, practicing to be fair like I started listening to that Earn Your Edge podcast yeah it's amazing how many different perspectives you get from tour pros you get like some of them would be right I swear by I have to have a swing for yeah. or a swing feeling and others will say I can't play I can't play with them unless I go out and play golf yeah so it is like yeah well, personal I remember preference sort of said about David Howell I remember asking him when I was a junior I think he just won Dubai Desert Classic and I think he said he, he literally had eight or nine swing thoughts that week and I was like how can you play wow. but like he said well I was comfortable with those feelings and it gives him something to think about while he's over the golf ball ra rather than thinking yeah i'm leading the tournament i'm doing this and doing it. he's like right as long as i know i mean eight is quite excessive but some guys will have two or three and it's, as long as i give them something to concentrate on rather than i've got this 107 yard shot and i've got up and down it and it'd be worth yeah. four hundred thousand to me they can then be like right i'll straighten my right leg turn my right hip <coughs> as long as i do those i should hit a good golf shot so sam barber asks what method do you use to control distance a hundred yards and in or is it just full three quarters etc yeah i sort of am practicing i'll practice my version of sort of clock face so i'll have like a what feels like a hip high to hip high swing sort of parallel to parallel a three yep. quarter to like a three quarter follow through and then a full shot and i'll do that with <clears throat> um, sort of three three of my four wedges um, and then you sort of end up with most bases covered knowing like 75 yards for me is a sort of um, parallel to parallel 56 so I know if I've got 80 yards then I can just either make an, quite an aggressive move with that or I'll do the same swing with a 52 so I work quite a lot on I suppose length of swings to generate feels okay so when you when you generate all those feels and you know the yardages do you then take that to the course so in a competition first oh we've got 80 yards do you like consciously think about that like right this is a 
shoulder to shoulder or do you think about it in your practice swing and then try um, and get feel no, it? No, sort of, yeah, if I've got 75 yards on the course, I'll be literally trying to just replicate really? what I've done in practice and with my 56, because I know that's my 75 yard shot. Or if, I, if I've got 72, I won't worry. I'm not good enough to take three yards off of it, so I'll just play it as a 75 yard yeah. shot. Or if the flag's at the back, I'll just play it as a 70 yard shot. I don't don't try and overcomplicate it away from what I've practiced. Okay, so based on that 107 yards, what's yeah, so that for this, you? This would normally go sort of 112. So I'd probably just make a full swing at this because I'm not good enough to take five yards off a shot of this distance as opposed to like a 55 to that's an interesting thought when you get 50 uh 15 handicappers in between clubs yeah, trying so to like manufacture something but like i could hit 10 balls trying to do the same swing here and probably have a 15 yard difference in the results even yeah. though i'm trying to hit totally full so when i say this goes 112 yards that's sort of my max out full average yardage. of all the shots yeah. you've hit type thing yeah yeah, rather than I'm going to hit it 112 every time. Yeah. It's going to go in that ballpark of, it might go 116, it might go 107. <clears throat> but I think this is probably playing more like 110, so. Okay, so it should pretty much be on it. Strike. Just like that then. Yeah. It's always good when you follow up, isn't it? Pitch it a little bit past and come back. Makes me look like I know what I'm doing. We're going to try and play, play some holes where you take the flag out. So if you've got smallish greens, if you've got 100 yards to the flag, but you might have 90, um, 100 yards to the middle of the green, but you might have 94 yards to the flag, you don't have the option of knowing it's 94. You, you can only hit a 100 yard shot and then let the variance let you hit it close to the hole yeah. rather than trying to hit take a bit off it because I've got 94 not 100 you, you don't know where the flag is and then your natural scatter pattern should finish quite a lot of shots close to the hole yeah. without you knowing that you're actually hitting it close to the hole Pat oh, oh. A bit rude, wasn't it? That's when I want to break the flag. 4.45, into off the left. Soft, cold, and a long way for me. Try and get it up the left half. Up the left half. A little wedging for you, wasn't it? Oh, flick. Hit it straighter. Look at that. Slot. Sorry for the camera work there, guys. We hit that more in the middle, don't you? Um, you got that little sort of tee that I can borrow. Flag straight behind that tree. It's in straight behind it, yeah. Slightly right of it, probably. Are you going left or right of the tree? You have to go left. Really. So either little. I don't think there's any gap that way. Nah, right's a bit bit more blocked out. Got it a long, long bump and run type shot. A little bit of savvy magic. Oh, she's through. Shot, left edge. Yeah. How far have you got? 178. Wind into off the left. I'm probably going to hit a full five iron. It's normally like around 185. Yep. I think it probably struggled to get there, but. Aiming how far left of the flag? Uh, I'll try and. Try and I've just started just left and. Okay. I should hold it a bit against the wind. Go. Just duff it on the front edge. Just a touch heavy. Well, I suppose that's like variance. Huh? It's like if it one ball 40 feet, 45 feet short and another ball 35 feet right. It's yeah. Like you don't know which one which one you're going to get before you hit it yeah it's funny you saying that like a, a whereas, tall pro whereas uh like a mid handicapper would be 
yeah, literally you, you, thinking they can take a few yards off a shot yeah, consistently. You, you confuse yourself out of a shot by like, oh, I don't know, I'm right in between here. And yeah. So you've actually probably got two, two decent options of clubs you can hit. Just had a bit of, uh, doing a bit of work on the greens at the moment, guys. Can't work out if they're going to be quicker or slower with uh, this on top. The latter. Actually, yeah. it's done well, isn't it? Yeah, it's done hard, man. It's not really done much to it. What's up? 9 iron. Oh. A bit more, yeah, I've got a wedge. Hello. Chop. Yes. That's Lovely good. line, that one. Back. Finishing off the video, we've got a few more questions. We'll try and get through these quick fire now. Pierce with five S's. How do you prepare for a tournament the night before ETC? With dominoes and a... <laughs> Sometimes with a dominoes. And a of coke. Yeah, if you're staying in a dodgy area, you don't want to go out. Um, golf wise, I normally try and obviously get your golf bag ready, all that sort of stuff. And I'll try and have a strategy of what I want to try and do from the practice rounds. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then sort of if I'm playing late, I generally just chill out in the morning and try not to. I try and get up to the golf club at the same time each day. Here it's like two hours before your tea time or an hour and a half. Yeah. Or, and I try and go to the range sort of 50 to 45 minutes before I play. Um, a lot of the lads I see some weeks are on the range. The Especially times. on, say, Jamiga, like at a slightly less experienced level. Some guys go to the range. One week they're an hour and a half before they're playing. The next week they're hitting balls. Yeah. Sort of half an hour before they Trying play. To find something. Ruben Rouse, how would you develop a tour level short game from scratch? What would your practice plan be? I mean, that you could go so deep on that. But just because this is a quick fire Q and A to finish off. Yeah. I mean, how would I, you sort of go about that? I, I would concentrate a lot on practicing your landing areas. So if you're you know, rather than look at the embers up where the ball's finished, practice, right, I'm landing it there, 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 there. You can do like a ladder drill where you mark out sort of a yard or two yards of landing space and work your way up the ladder. So you've got to land it in the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one, yeah. and then come back or then do variants. To make it harder, you could then say, right, I've got to land it in the second one, the fourth one, the third one, the fifth one, the first one. Yeah. So you're constantly changing your feel and building up. Because to be um, fair, that's all chipping is really in it, trying to predictively predict, trying to predict, or trying to consistently hit like trajectories and landing points. Yeah, yeah, because if you can hit a lovely chip and it digs in, oh, that wasn't a good shot. Whereas you actually did everything you wanted to do, and yeah. it was just the variance of the golf course mm -hmm. that costs you, or you've misjudged how it's going to react on the green, but you've actually had to keep the shot how you wanted to. D and X, Y, 89. This isn't a question, but can you caddy for James for nine holes? Mainly, mainly, mainly for the decision-making choices. So I, I think you've I got can, to do that at some point. Yeah, I can drive the buggy around for nine holes. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not carrying golf clubs. <laughs> <laughs> Callum Ryan, 1997 podcasts that you listen to. Oh, I listen to quite a few. Earn Your Edge podcasts. That's quality. Um, a lot of good guests on that. Uh, the Colt Nost podcast. I can't remember what it's called. John Morgan and Kit Alexander on the Filthy Lip Out. That's quite a funny podcast, so it's good people on that. So yeah, I try and mix it up with some sort of educational ones and some fun ones, but um, the Earn Your Edge podcast is really good. Yeah, a lot of good players on that. S is an interesting one, I'll be interested in this. SJ Bailey 2 what's the best round you've ever had? Um, uh, probably second round to qualify for the British Open. I think I shot like three or four under but it was knowing what was on the end of it to mm. sort of qualify for a tournament that you've watched all your life and you've dreamt about playing in and yeah um so that was that was quite cool yeah that's pretty awesome. uh probably wasn't the best golf i've played but it probably meant meant the most yeah wazzy dot ali 11 this is interesting because you don't really do this how do, how do you plan an aggressive round of golf you shouldn't try and be aggressive i try and hit the right shots not yeah. aggressive shots or safe shots I, with the decades stat system I use sort of I'm not trying to play defensively or aggressively I'm trying to play what is the right the shot percentages. Yeah. I think it's interesting some amateurs have this perception that especially on like Sunday in a major like 
everyone's just going out and doing silly stuff. Maybe yeah. like a few doing it, they yeah. fall by the wayside, but there's a lot of players that I think there's a lot of a lot of the guys get interviewed and probably say stuff that they think they're doing that they're not actually doing. Yeah. Like I went at every flag or I give every putt a go and um or you know, or the commentator say, Oh, he's turned it on there. It's like, well, he hasn't turned it on. Yeah. If you could if you could turn it on you would have done that on Thursday. Yeah. It's just a few things that and happen. not leave it with two holes to go on a Sunday. Yeah. A few putts have gone in, whatever. Back H. Does he prefer winning smaller tournaments or placing in money in big tournaments? Uh, I think probably winning, winning the smaller one because you don't. No matter what you're doing in golf, you don't win very often. Mm. Irrespective, you know, look at Tiger Woods. I think it was his best winning season ten, was it? Or was that VJ? Yeah, that's VJ, wasn't it? But I'm like, that's a hell of a lot of wins, but you're still not winning very often as a, compared to like a team sport or something. Yeah. So no, I'd probably. Unless it was a second place in the Open or something. <laughs> yeah. That's that, coming up. Outside of a massive tournament, then yeah, we're in a smaller one. Cool. Right, that's it. Cheers for asking all the questions. Hope you get some knowledge from this guy. We try and try to, week by week. Uh, we'll see you on the next one.